Hi class, my name is Susan Drake and I'm going to be doing my presentation on Mexico. Um, I was very curious about this country because it's located very close to Texas. In addition, I'm interested in the people, the culture, and uh, the education in Mexico. So let's begin. So Mexican's pop Mexico's population is 103.5 million people. Uh, the size of it is 2 million kilometers squared, or essentially the size of three Texas states. The form of government is the Federal Republic. Uh, the main religion is Roman Catholic, 90% uh, Protestant, I'm sorry, Roman Catholic 90%, Protestant 5%, and other 1%. So as many of you know, um, there's a lot of history that goes back to um, the Mexican people. Um, the Olmecs were some of the most influential cultures at that time. Uh, they had hieroglyphics, um, the Mesoamerican calendars, and architecture, as well as art. Um, they rose in the 1400s, and much of their practices were reverberated through the Mayans. Um, they had a lot of cosmology beliefs, um, which uh, reflected in the architecture, math, and astronomy, as well as writing systems and accurate calendars. They were located in the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, the Aztecs were known for their agricultural practices, trade, and intricate um, architecture as well. Um, they had the floating city, which was Tecnochitlan, um, which was similar to our Italy today. It was made from uh, waste matter and root systems that were intertwined similar to baskets. So uh, let's see, in 1519 Montezuma was killed by Cortez and in 1521 the Aztecs were destroyed. Sorry, uh, let's see, 1821 Mexico declares their independence and in 1824 Mexico becomes a republic. Um, let's go ahead and text, let's see, uh, Texas Revolution begins in 1835, um, Texas declares its independence from Mexico in 1836, the Mexican-American War ends with the Treaty of Guadalupe, which basically the U.S., um, bought a bunch of what is, what was Mexico, uh, the Gasden Purchase is just the remaining, uh, properties of those uh, states that were not fully bought. Um, let's see, the Mexico Revolution, 1910. Um, and this is really important. In 1929, the Mexican parties formed PRI and they are instated for 70 years, which in 1930, they had a lot of economic growth. Um, in 1942, Mexico joins the Allied forces in World War II. In 1993, NAFTA, US and Canada trade agreement is um, put together and uh, they do it for uh, forging bonds to look like a bigger power within the rest of the global network. Uh, the fall of the currency happens the following year with the peso, which was devastating because the peso is no longer backed by anything and it fluctuates daily. And in 2000, the first president, not from the PRI, um, which is the Mexican party, um, happens. Okay, so let's see. Uh, here you can see some art. Uh, the Omeleks were known for a lot of giant heads were found, um, thought to depict rulers as for political or religious reasons. Um, paper, stone, ceramics, wall painting, jade sculptures were also used for political or religious reasons. Um, after the Spaniards, art was heavily influenced by the European culture, especially after um, they came over. Uh, oil paints and murals were used as government propaganda in public buildings, as you can see, with artist Diego uh, Rivera. Um, after some time, Mexican art only began depicting um, non-European culture. Mexican folk art is known for its natural, indigenous, and bright, vibrant colors and details. Mexican ceramic art was created by hands to shape pottery, pots, quill pots, which were baked by open fire, and then. Uh, the cinema in the mid-1900s was used to convey social injustices, urban struggles, government censorship, and at that time, women's rights. 
Let's go ahead and cover some customs and national days and festivals. Um, the December 12th is the Feast of Lady Guadalupe. Um, Samana Santa or Holy Week, a religious holiday where they celebrate Christ's resurrection, which is like Easter. Um, July Guala Guates, uh, an indigenous cultural event. Mexican fiestas were common, or excuse me, are common in Mexico and they happen at least once a year. Um, music is an integral part of festivals and feasts. Uh, September 16th, Independence Day, freedom from Spanish rule, so like our um, 4th of July. Um, they had a lot of fireworks and it's a big party. November 1st and 2nd, Day of the Dead, offerings are made to the souls of the ancestors to remember them. Okay, let's continue. Uh, a lot of the food there um, has to do with the location of where you are. So according to Helen Dwyer from Chimu Blog, food is variety varied, excuse me, according to the region. In the Yucatan, it consists of mostly fruits, ocasia, tortillas, tamales, and moles, mountain region, beef, mutton, pork, goat, and spices. In the Pacific coast, mainly seafood, uh, corned beef, and chiles, avocados, rice, and tomatoes are the main component, component of meals. Um, as you can see, um, I have chilaquias, which is a popular meal. So let's go ahead and look at music. Music there is um, kind of falls into three different things in addition to um, the traditional Mexican music, which is characterized by mariachi, ranchera, norteño. Um, mariachi is the band that has violins, trumpets, and a classical guitar. Ranchera is the traditional folklore based on and centered around love and patriotism in nature. Norteño is based on the waltz and polka and middle to fast paced. So for entertainment, a lot of football is played or as we know, soccer. Um, it's the most popular sport. The historical sites are Chichen Itza, uh, Tetiquan, Tell them, just to name a few. Uh, beaches, of course, are very popular in Mexico. The Tulum, Cancun, Los Cabos. Um, and who wouldn't want to go to the gardens, right? Floating gardens of Ochimilco, Vivero, uh, Coyenca, Can, Garden of Art. So just, just a few things. Uh, family and tradition and culture. It's Mexican families are close-knit and generally very large and parents are held in highest esteem. In addition, entertaining with parties is common and customary. They really want to make you feel welcome. Um, according to Life Science Magazine, culture revolves around religious values and church. Um, according to HistoryPlex, men and women have distinct roles. Men are to only work if the, I'm sorry, women are only to work if the man is unable to. Grandparents help raise children. All family members live close to each other. Customs and traditions are passed along to ensure traditions are preserved. Um, ed education in Mexico is very similar. Um, they have a lot of the same systems as we do. Pre-K is um, privatized, so they would have to pay for their own children to go. Um, the rest is pretty much all the same. The only thing that's different is the statistics of completion rate. Um, in addition to uh, the amount of students who, um, uh, in addition to the students who work during their education, so uh, let's go ahead and look at some statistics, which I found very interesting because I'm an education. Um, I'm, I will be going into the education major, uh, so. 15-year-olds um, were uh, rated on their scores with reading of 46 out of 65 uh, within the country, so they were rated against other industrial countries. They, they ranked uh, 49 out of 65 in math. Um, according to Reuters, 62% reached secondary school. At secondary level, only about half of students drop out and only a quarter reach higher education according to non-governmental organization Mexicanos Primeros. Uh, around 45% of Mexicans finish secondary school. 
Uh, Mexicanos Primero says, but contrast, about 75% of U.S. students graduate from high school on time with a regular diploma, according to the U.S. Department of Education. Uh, student life. So, like I was saying before, um, nearly 21% of the cohort population uh, within the ages of 5 to 16 have been in their studies, while 53.3% both study and do housework, another 27% uh, combine outside employment with housework. Um, for exchange students going there, uh, crime rates are very high in Mexico, attributed to homicide rates, drugs, and gangs. Uh, travel public transportation by day is suggested and private car by night. Don't carry a lot of cash on hand, don't wear expensive jewelry. And the uh, main language is Spanish, but there are also indigenous spoken languages. Uh, healthcare is privatized. Um, I'm sorry, healthcare, there's private, public, and universal healthcare insurance plans. Uh, military state employees have different health plans. Many can only afford basic insurance healthcare. Um, the full healthcare coverage in 2004 was known as a popular health insurance, which provided um, just basic care. Um, some environmental issues, according to planet.com, uh, are dumping, chemical pollutions, deforestation, and uh, due to widespread poverty, government neglect, and corruption. So in conclusion, um, as you can see, Mexico, like any country, has had times of prosperity, economic growth, and expansion, um, they, but it has also had hardships, um, economic instability, and selling off of land. The Mexican people are highly resilient due to poor economic conditions, opportunities for education, healthcare, quality of life are deeply affected. While the Mexican people have deep cultural connect connections which boost their morale, it is no doubt there is a decrease in trust in corrupt government safety and reforms that increase the economic debt. While growth is the hope for every country, creating a stable government with equal opportunities, fair pay is what will make Mexico grow. I hope you enjoyed my presentation, and if you have any comments um, or anything to add, I would be uh, obliged. Thank you so much for watching my presentation.